Hey, Eon here, and welcome back to Building LibreFlip, an open source page journey book scanner. This is the camera holder, and there is an issue with it. The issue is that the camera, like, fits in just barely, but it's really hard to get in on all four corners properly. So, like, there is, like, I can press it in, but when it's mounted in the book scanner, then there is a tension on this piece of plastic, and uh, I somehow can't get the camera in. And on top of that, the cable ties that go from here through uh, through the middle and then through this notch and uh, through the back, they don't really prevent much movement in this dimension. In the, and therefore the cameras keep popping out of the frame in the book scanner. So I had to redesign the camera holder. It's this one, this piece and this piece that goes with it. This part receives four threaded inserts to mount this part with screws on there. I'll show you how this goes together. Let's insert these. They all have a, let me show you. The threaded inserts have, have one straight side and one tapered side. And I want to put them in so the tapered side points to this side, and the non-tapered side pokes out here. So remember to have a small set of pliers ready. Then you don't swear and you don't burn your fingers. Good. Let's see. Oh yeah, some cleanup is apparently needed. I guess that's okay. And let's do the cleanup with the tap and a battery power drill. This is the support structure and it needs to be taken off before I can use the parts. Ooh, this breaks away really, really nice. Love it. You just pull on it and it just comes all off. That's brilliant. Let's try that again. Wow, it all pulled free at once. Let's do that again. Wow, that's so much less pain than I had with other 3D prints in my life. That's really cool. These parts actually were printed on an original Prusa i3 Mark III, and the support is amazing. Okay, let's continue and uh, put in some threaded inserts into that part as well. Let me show you something else that doesn't work with the first version. So the camera goes in like this and the USB-C plug sticks to the side. This is the cable that came from the manufacturer with the cameras, which is too short. I knew that. And I designed it so that there's a flush surface between the lower PCB, the frame and the USB-C plug. And this bit of plastic, this bit of plastic here has the exact same dimension than the slit that stayed with this plug. But then I bought the longer cables and turns out they are a bit shorter. So this doesn't work anymore. It doesn't completely slips in. If I take it out though, it slips completely in and that, that distance is a lot smaller than this frame. So this didn't work either. 
I found out when I tried to wire up the cameras in the suction box. So I redesigned a new holder. Let's see how that works. So with the new holder, the camera module slips in like this. Yeah, there is a, it has a little bit more play now. 0 0.2 millimeters more. And then there is a thing that goes on top. So I'll take off the protect, protective cap. Carefully slid on this thing. It fits rather tight. Put the cap back on. And now I can screw this down. And this is the M3 by 10 that is used in so many other parts. This now holds the camera much more sturdy and much more precisely in position. And now I can show you how the cable fits. Now it fits like this. It's flush here. And it sits nicely under here. So let's mount this. Let's take off the screws of these so we can put them on the other one. These are trash. Let's put these back on. And I made myself this tiny, tiny wrench because uh, for the heck of it, I needed something that is short enough for this small thing. And this goes just past this bolt so I can actually turn it around inside of this camera holder. The cameras are ready to be put in. Yay! Let's put the cable in, now that it finally fits. Great, both cameras wired up. Cables are leaving the suction box here and then are attached on the tube and go down there and the cables go through there and then they enter in this rather crowded looking electronics compartment. One camera is hooked up to the Odroid directly and the other USB 3 port I'm using for this USB 3 hub so I can connect some more USB devices and I have connected the camera here. The other USB devices I'm connecting is the handy USB port here. This is what it looks from the back side. And you see in the front view. Another thing that I'm plugging into the USB hub is the Arduino over here. And the Arduino controls the stepper motor and the relay board to the right of it. And reads the sensors and does the mechatronical part of it. Basically, while the Odroid does the higher order image processing and making a UI and storing data. Before I can test all the electric wiring inside, I need to actually put a fuse inside here. Otherwise, nothing will have power. Let's put the fuse in, like so. And let's push this back in. 
Now we need to remember that as soon as I put power in here, it's actually connected to stuff. So I have a bit of a situation here. I Right now I have no clue in what episode we are in, but I believe I shot a pretty much a lot of material with all the wiring job. Initially I thought it would be two episodes, but it might be three episodes of wiring already. I'll decide that later on when I cut this. Usually I do one evening in the workshop and then I cut that video and that it's and then it's usually either a full or a half episode. But with the wiring, the wiring was so chaotic and uh, so time consuming that right now I really don't know where we are at, how much how much episodes this will turn out to be. So um I I can't really tell you what's going to happen in the next episode, but it might have something to do with uh, testing the electronics and uh, giving it power for the first time and uh, seeing if everything works out and something along those lines. Uh, that that would be cool. I don't have a title for that yet, but um, <laughs> I'm going to get there. I'm not a professional YouTuber. I just do this to document this project. Um, so thanks for watching. It was uh, fun to wire the thing, although a much bigger job than I anticipated. And I hope you'll watch the next episode, which will be released next Thursday. And in the next episode, I'll probably have some electrons flowing through the wires. And if you just made your way to the series, this is just one episode of a longer series where I show all the steps to make the page turning book scanner LibreFlip. This project is supported by the Wikimedia Foundation and also by Seabase. And I'm building this book scanner because I think that we need an open source page turning automatic book scanner that many people can build themselves. The plans will always stay free and you can find them on our website to download.